Our next topic of discussion is ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. Typically, we just say UV vis or UV vis spectroscopy, and the scientific community will know what we're talking about. So, spectroscopy is the technique in which we study matter and the properties of matter by seeing how the matter interacts with light. And the big ones that organic chemists use, the, or the types of light that organic chemists use to study matter are radio waves. Radio waves are used in a spectroscopic technique called NMR, which you will learn shortly. Organic chemists use infrared light, and we call that IR spectroscopy. And then there is the ultraviolet visible region, which we just clump the UV and the visible region into just one. And we call it UV visible spectroscopy. And UV vis. Now these three types of light are used to study matter and from an organic chemist perspective we're going to use these techniques UV vis, IR, and NMR to help us understand the structure of molecules. UV vis is, helps a little bit with the structure of molecules but a major use of UV spectroscopy is to help organic chemists figure out concentrations of solutions. So for example, if I had a solution here of water and I had some protein in that solution, I can use UV vis to help us figure out the concentration of the protein in that solution. So now our focus then for this uh, topic is going to be UV vis. How does ultraviolet light and visible light interact with matter? Now we have a UV vis spectrometer, spectrophotometer schematic shown right here. Right? And it's really simple here where we have a light source. So that could be UV light or visible light. And we can shine that through this entrance slit. And then we have this dispersion device, which is called a monochromator. And a monochromator is simply a device that can select for a particular wavelength of light. So you see all these colors of light right here. Colors of light are just different wavelengths of light. So the monochromator can de decide which wavelength of light is going to exit the exit slit. And then that light, which you get to decide as the uh, scientist, and in my example here, we chose orange light. That orange light can then flow through what we call a cuvette. This cuvette can be made out of quartz or plastic or some other kind of plastic-like material. And so light is passed or shined through the cuvette and within that cuvette we will have our sample. So we could like envision we have a red solution in there or a clear solution, it doesn't matter. And we shine our sample through it. And what's interesting, some molecules can absorb light. And so what's happening is the detector knows how much light is coming, how much light it was starting with. So the, in, the I in this little thing right here, I, stands for intensity. So the, the instrument knows the original intensity of light that was was used and then the detector can say hey the light that hit my detector 
was less than what we were using. And so when there's less light hitting the detector than what was going in, that means that the molecules had to absorb that light. And what you have here in panel B is that the detector now can take that information, give it to the computer, and the computer can give us a readout that says, hey, we have our molecule of interest that was in our sample absorbed light at that wavelength. So on the x-axis, you could say, hey, it absorbed light at, let's say, you could say 400 and 600 nanometers. And on the y-axis, it will tell us how much light was absorbed. Okay. And so these absorption bands right here are very, very important for chemists because there's useful information. If the line is flat, like in these regions right here, that's telling us that no light is being absorbed by our sample. And that's also useful information, which I will show you shortly why that's so useful, okay? Now, UV vis spectroscopy is usually done in that range of 200 to 800 nanometers. And the light is going to be shown through our sample. And I said the, the cuvette is the glass container. Right? But when we take a solution and stick it into that cuvette, we have, well, let's just draw it out here. Okay, here's our cuvette. Okay. And in it, we have a liquid. But then you can put in this, the molecule of interest, which I'm representing by the dots. Okay. So now we have a solution because we have taken our compound, stuck it into water or an organic solvent, and now it's a solution. The molecule that we put into the liquid is called a analyte. So the UV vis spectrophotometer is measuring how much light the analyte absorbs. So I'm just going through some terminology with you. Okay. Now when you select for a certain wavelength of light, so our orange light, I already talked about how we have the the intensity of, of the source and the computer and the instrument knows what intensity of light it's shining and then the intensity of the light that actually hits the detector. Okay. Now we can view that as percent transmittance. Okay. So percent transmittance is just saying what percentage of light is actually hitting the detector. So if I start with a hundred percent intensity of light, what is it when it hits the detector? And that's going to give us a percent. We can convert that into a percentage. And the way we do that is this equation right here. Percent transmittance is where you take the intensity of light that's detected and divide it by the intensity of the source and then multiply that by 100 and you will get a percent transmittance. So we have to keep transmittance and absorbance separate and distinct. They mean different things. Okay? Trans percent transmittance is asking how much of the light is hitting the detector. Absorption is saying how much of the light was law, how much of the light was absorbed. All right. And I'm going to show you an equation in the next slide on how to calculate absorbance. All right. Now absorbance 
okay, on the y-axis here can in theory range from zero all the way to infinity. Now, when we have our experiments, we're going to put limits to that, and that's based off of the experimental design. But in theory, absorption can go on forever. But the equation that we need to be aware of is absorption or absorbance is right here. Absorbance is the negative log of the intensity of light detected divided by the intensity of the source. You can also rearrange that equation to look like this as well. Now, if you want to understand how to derive these equations, I would be more than happy to do that during office hours. But that's two very important equations, or three equations actually, that you need to know. The absorption equations and percent transmittance. Really, really important. Okay. So when you're wondering, when you're looking at a graph, it, and you're asking, is that transmittance or absorption? You gotta just look at the y-axis and be just familiarize yourself and get oriented to like, okay, what does this data mean and what is it talking about? Now, one, as I mentioned before, one major purpose of UV Viz is to calculate concentrations of unknown solutions. And in order to do that, we need to understand the Beer-Lambert law, which tells us that absorption is equal to these three terms right there. Right. Now this law is telling us that absorbance is directly proportional to those three variables. So the capital C is the concentration of the analyte in the solution. And the concentration of the analyte is going to affect how much light is going to be absorbed. We have the length, the length of the sample through which the light travels. And what that is talking about is when you come back here and you have your cuvette, you can get cuvettes that are really, really thin or really, really wide. And it just depends on the instrument that you're using. And it also depends on the type of experiment you want to do. So you have to actually measure or the manufacturer will tell you the length of those cuvettes. And we typically call that the path length. And then you have the little symbol right here, epsilon, the Greek symbol epsilon, which stands for molar absorptivity. And this value is developed experimentally, but it's what it's talking about or what it means is that when you take a sample and you have your analyte in that sample, it is not 100% guaranteed that when you shine light on it, it will absorb the light. There's a probability that it will absorb the light. And so the molar absorptivity coefficient tells us the probability that molecules will absorb light. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation here and in class I'm going to show you how to use Beer's Law, that's what we call it, for short. We, you can say the full name Beer-Lambert Law, but I've been, I've heard it so many times just says Beer's Law. All right. But we're going to use absorption and Beer's Law to calculate the concentration of an unknown. So if you come here, 
you get your sample placed in that cuvette, you have no idea what the concentration is, so you stick it into the, the, the spectrophotometer and you get a readout. And you get the readout of the intensity. So this peak right there is more intense than that peak right there. So you're going to get the intensity of the absorption. So you're going to get A. And then you're going to use that So you saw you used the spectrophotometer to find the absorption. You know the path length of the cuvette that you have, and the molecule of interest that you're looking at. You can look in uh, books or on the internet to find the the coefficient here. And so now you have three of the four variables known. So now all you have to do is solve for C in order to find the concentration. And so we will go through some examples with that about that in class. Butadiene can absorb wavelengths of light in that region. Now, if we say, look, if we look at that dot that I'm pointing to right there, butadiene is absorbing light at that wavelength. That is true. But at this wavelength right here, it absorbs the most. So when you look at a, a graph like this, you can find a wavelength that absorbs light the most, and we call that lambda max. So we want to understand at a deeper level, why does butadiene absorb light at these wavelengths? And why is this wavelength right there the wavelength that absorbs the most? So in order to answer that question, we need to review the properties of light. And I'm going to discuss those properties in the next video.